Hello everyone. I am Dr. Vikas Jain, consultant, orthopedic and spine surgeon, and I am running a spine and scoliosis clinic in Mumbai. Importance of the musculoskeletal health. When we say the musculoskeletal health, what does it mean, and what does it uh, have an importance in our life? Musculoskeletal health plays a key role to keep up good mobility and dexterity in an individual, along with enhancing their ability to work and actively participate in all aspects of the life. A good musculoskeletal health is also crucial to maintain economic, social, and functional independence across their life course. Physical activity has a crucial role in reducing the risk of other non-communicable diseases and it can only be achieved with adequate musculoskeletal health. The next question which is commonly seen or commonly asked, what is the relationship between painful musculoskeletal condition and a reduced capacity to engage in the physical activity? Now, impaired musculoskeletal health can lead to acute and chronic pain causing physical limitation proceeding in loss of participation and withdrawal from usual social community and occupational activities, further decreasing the quality of life and well-being, including mental well-being. Impaired musculoskeletal health can lead to substantial personal, community and societal consequences, particularly in the older people, a strong relationship between painful musculoskeletal conditions, lack of physical activity and resulting functional decline, frailty, loss of well-being and loss of independence, as well as the depressive symptoms has been described by several epidemiological studies. An individual with the arthritis and the musculoskeletal disorders is sure to be lesser active than an individual without arthritis, as we all know. Thus, a lack of regular physical activity emerges as the most prevalent risk factor associated with the further functional decline. Most importantly, impaired musculoskeletal health causing reduced physical capability like grip strength, walking speed, chair raising, and standing balance has been frequently linked to the increased mortality. Thus, weak musculoskeletal health is a key component of frailty. Next question comes to our mind is, what is the impact of impaired musculoskeletal health? Now, the impact of impaired musculoskeletal health is now recognized globally with an increase in the morbidity as well as the mortality related to it. A good musculoskeletal health is crucial for maintaining an active, productive, as well as prolonged working life. With an increase in the global retirement age, maintaining good musculoskeletal health will become increasingly important for the older workers as many occupations and work-related activities are associated with the musculoskeletal disorders like low back pain, and shoulder disorders. Thus, it is important to identify and implement effective interventions for the people with musculoskeletal conditions to remain productive at work. High income countries observe musculoskeletal conditions to be one of the major causes of the work loss and early retirement and lost retirement wealth. While developing countries see a musculoskeletal conditions to have a major impact on livelihoods. Thus, reduced musculoskeletal health results in a reduced productivity and economic loss to the society at all the levels. Since musculoskeletal conditions are chronic, painful, associated with a disability and social disengagement frequently causes mental health impairments such as depression and anxiety, as well as the other comorbidities, physical and mental aspects of quality of life related to health is known to be greatly impacted in persons with multi-morbidity 
Unfortunately, this impact is even greater when there is an associated musculoskeletal conditions. What next? What is the burden of disease related to the musculoskeletal conditions? Now, the non-communicable diseases now account for most of the global burden of the disease with the musculoskeletal conditions being the leading contributor. Developing countries well recognize the transition of the burden to long-term disabling conditions. However, now low and the middle income countries are also demonstrating the enormous future impact from musculoskeletal conditions such as osteoporosis and low back pain, driven by population growth and aging. Since age is the commonest risk factor for the musculoskeletal conditions, it is estimated that by 2050, there will be a five time rise in the people over 40 years living in developing countries, contrasting the wealthier occupation. The World Bank 2011 says this. Additionally, obesity, another important risk factor for many musculoskeletal conditions is also hypothesized to rise dramatically in the developing countries over the coming two decades. Furthermore, increased use of motor vehicles is not only reducing the physical activity, but also increasing the number of motor vehicle accidents, as well as resulting musculoskeletal trauma and the disorders. Now, what is the role of physical inactivity and sedentary behavior in the musculoskeletal health. Sustained and systemic urbanization in the developed countries has led to sedentary behavior among the people, particularly the younger ones, the rapid growth of legends of video games, social media, movie streaming, and binge watching seems to be the prime contributor, which leads to a very much of sedentary lifestyle. This surge in the sedentary behavior is not only a major risk factor for many chronic diseases, but is also recognized as a substantial global economic burden. Increasing physical activity and optimizing exercise as recommended by the Arthritis Research UK versus Arthritis and WHO is an optimal way to improve the musculoskeletal health. Evidence shows that the effects of a sedentary lifestyle can be reduced by a small amount of activity every day. A recent meta-analysis utilizing the data of more than a million individuals concluded that one hour of a moderate level of activity daily can eliminate the increased risk of death associated with eight hours of sitting. Thus, a moderate level of physical activity remains a key requirement for healthy aging and maintaining the musculoskeletal health. Sedentary behavior is a major contributor of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Likewise, obesity is also a major contributor to the development and progression of the osteoarthritis and several epidemiological studies confirm the link between adiposity and joint degeneration. Evidence suggests that increasing the level of physical activity will not only increase the musculoskeletal health, but also decrease the risk of suffering from obesity related disease, such as diabetes, WHO recommendation on physical activity for health individuals. Now to answer to this question is nearly two hours per week of moderate physical activity or about 20 minutes per day of any kind of the physical activity like a brisk walking is absolutely recommended by WHO. These exercises elevate the heart rate and are known to be associated with a lower time lifetime risk of cardiovascular diseases. Apart from rendering the musculoskeletal health benefits, improvement in the cardiorespiratory fitness can be achieved by changing the sedentary behavior to achieve a low intensity physical activity like walking. Exercise is now widely prescribed 
for the rehabilitation of musculoskeletal injuries and its use as a preventive health measures is now widely investigated with guidelines around the type frequency and duration of activity being considered now, focus on evidence based interventions for the musculoskeletal conditions that cause the most dli disability adjusted life years low back pain or the neck pain can be benefited by staying active and exercising regularly group exercise programs or a weight loss support if required can be considered to reduce the incidence of falls balance and strength training home hazard assessment participation in falls prevention programs and getting involved in the activities like gardening dancing etc will help osteoarthritis has been shown to be benefited from activities and exercises that improve the muscles and aerobic fitness like walking swimming pilates weight loss support can be rendered if required now to explain the association between healthy aging and physical exercise aging is inescapable but it can be made easy and healthy with the help of exercises exercise renders many benefits to the aging body including reducing the manifestations of aging especially the aging phenotype of the elderly a recent systematic review concluded the physical exercise renders a positive impact on the muscle mass and functions in the healthy subjects aged 60 years and above by improving the muscle performance by increasing the ratio of type 1 to type 2 muscle fibers the increasing the cross sectional area of type 2 muscle fibers now european society for clinical and economical aspects of the osteoporosis osteoarthritis and musculoskeletal diseases the society named by ESCEO task force recommended higher protein intake in combination with the physical exercise in post menopausal women at risk of developing a menopause associated musculoskeletal disease like osteoporosis physical exercise programs improve the strength and balance in aging women with op that is osteoporosis additionally fragility fracture risk associated with the osteoporosis can be decreased by following an exercise program an exercise increases the bone density as well as reduces the inflammatory markers thus having an active lifestyle from an early age and following recommendations for the exercises could be beneficial for women furthermore exercises and mechanical loading also have a positive impact at the molecular cellular and tissue levels like with aging the potential for the cell proliferation and the number of stem or progenitor like cells decreases in tendons exercise or loading can induce an increase in the tendon collagen synthesis thus increasing the tendon strength physical exercise and mechanical loading also have a positive role in maintaining the cartilage as well as the bone health moderate exercises could also enhance the quality of tissue produced during the healing of injured tendons what is the relationship between obesity and the musculoskeletal diseases a surge in the sedentary behavior and the unhealthy diets have caused a global obesity epidemic along with a sharp rise in the incidence of type 2 diabetes these are further great risk factors for cardiovascular diseases and neurodegenerative diseases which further complicates the management of musculoskeletal diseases obesity is an important comorbidity of many musculoskeletal conditions and is closely related to the development of osteoarthritis one of the commonest musculoskeletal health issues thus strategies aimed at reducing the obesity in adults will reduce the recurrence or occurrence of osteoarthritis and thus can alleviate some of the pain of the condition interestingly obesity is also one of the most modifiable risk factor for the osteoarthritis exercises and weight loss have benefited overweight and obese adults with the knee osteoarthritis in many clinical trials thus 
combining modest weight loss with the moderate exercises can provide the best overall improvement in symptoms of pain and joint function now what are the consequences of childhood obesity and the physical inactivity lack of physical exercise in childhood causes childhood obesity which further leads to the musculoskeletal pain in later life thus reducing the obesity in children by encouraging physical activity will also reduce the risk of developing a musculoskeletal pain later in his life furthermore consumption of unhealthy diet and sedentary lifestyle is contributing to the increased incidence of childhood obesity lower in the nutritional value and higher in the caloric content foods further contribute to the obesity epidemic which may also play in a high prevalence of the type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular diseases which are further exacerbated by the lack of fitness and by the inactivity now is the diet also a part of health living how does it affect the musculoskeletal health now answer is yes diet is inevitably an important part of the health living a 3 year follow up study including about 400 adults showed that diets higher in potassium from fruits and vegetable intake reduced the amount of muscle loss in adults more than 65 years dietary flavonoid intake from fruits and vegetables is also known to be positively correlated with a good bone health that is bone mineral density and the bone resorption in perimenopausal women improving the diet of osteoarthritis patient have also shown the greater benefits vitamin d calcium particularly protein consumption have been shown to optimize the muscle bone and functional outcomes other people reducing fall and the fractures calcium and protein synergistically optimize the bone health thus dietary strategies for improving musculoskeletal health should include consumption of long chain fatty acids vitamin d and vitamin k helps in bone and cartilage mineralization and decreasing the bone blood cholesterol antioxidants rich diet may benefit athletes by improving the tissue repair sarcopenia in elderly people can be benefited by combining exercise with a dietary supplement of whey protein fortified with the vitamin d as it increases the muscle mass and strength thank you very much for listening this topic